is the leg that's getting me to London. This part is called the cheetah flex foot. You know, the cool thing about these TED conferences are the amazing coincidences that bring people together. Amy Mullins, that blonde bombshell running up there, she runs on the cheetah feet, and she's a seasoned TED talker herself. Oscar Pistorius, that other bombshell, <laughs> has just made Olympic qualifying times with an astonishing 45 seconds in the 400 meters. Our next speaker was president of the company that developed the Cheetah Flex feet. It's because of him that people like Amy, Oscar, and myself are able to achieve dreams. I am thrilled to introduce to you all Athor Bender. Working with uh, people like Lacey is uh, so inspirational. And uh, it's actually been amazing how far we have managed to reach with uh, amputees. But doing, do, doing that, um, we have kind of felt that there is something missing. And uh, that is actually people that are still sitting in wheelchairs. About uh, 70 million people all together that uh, do not have pretty much any other option. Oftentimes, spinal cord injury. Spinal cord injury oftentimes happens very early on in your age. It's uh, 30s, 40s. It's people who are taking risks. As a result of that, they sit in wheelchairs. And uh, we, we kind of started looking at this and thought, OK, if we can do this for uh, people like Lacey, and why not continue and move on to the much bigger task, which is to get people out of wheelchairs Give them really an option, at least, a new platform. Expand their possibilities, we call it. And um, so we started collaborating with researchers in, at the UC Berkeley. And, um, and out of that came uh, exoskeletons that uh, we are um, about to launch now and get, get ready with. But what is interesting about uh, being here with you here in Denver is that one of the test pilots, like we call them, the people who we collaborate with in terms of, but just like Lacey, uh, but in this case, a spinal cord injured individual, comes actually from Colorado, actually from Aspen. And uh, we contacted her in July, and uh, she was immediately on the plane, over. And uh, because we, we had heard that she not only is enthusiastic about pushing technology forward, but that she was a very good spokesperson, which is so important when you are pushing disruptive technologies like this into, into, the, into the atmosphere. Especially if you think about it, that um, the wheelchair has been around for 500 years. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty amazing. I don't know who invented that, but he did a good job. <laughs> But anyhow, we are determined to offer now a, a new option. And uh, I'm the proud and, and thrilled to be able to uh, present it to you here on stage uh, with Amanda Boxtel, who actually until July had not walked for 19 years. So uh, what you see here is uh, a new device we call Elex. And uh, Elex is uh, wrapped around her. It is meant for rehabilitation purposes at the moment. But what, how it works, just tell you that before I, I let Amanda speak. I know that she's eager to speak. Um, it has uh, sensors in the crutches that actually mimic her motion. So when she moves her right crutch forward, it actually sends signal to a computer that's here on the back. It's covered with, with batteries on both sides that actually last during the whole day. And that drives them further on motors, four motors that are sitting here. 
And uh, it was a very smooth and natural gait, which is very important, especially in rehabilitation. You're trying to teach people oftentimes to walk again. And uh, so that's Elex. And uh, I, I know Amanda is <laughs> eager to share her background a little bit and, and her first experience kind of with Elex and maybe what you think uh, the potential is with something like this. So Thank you, Aether. Thank you, everybody. I was 24 years old at the prime of my life. I was a ballet dancer. For years I trained in classical, and then I became an aerobic dance instructor. I was an athlete. I was a sprinter, a long jumper. But one of my favorite memories is running on the beach in Australia, having waves chase me, and feeling the sand squeak in between my toes. And then, everything changed. It was a cold, blustery day, February 27, 1992. I remember it vividly. I was in Snowmass Ski Area near Aspen. I skied down, and by accident, I crossed my tips. I did a somersault, and in a split second, I shattered four vertebrae. An electric current zapped through my legs, and there was nothing. I lost all movement and sensation below my pelvis. As you sit there in your, wheel in your seats, I was almost said wheelchairs, <laughs> as you sit there in your seats, imagine what it's like to be in a wheelchair and to be paralyzed. Place your feet firmly on the ground. Surrender your mind to all sensation and movement below your waist. All you have is the memory of what it was like to wiggle your toes and to have your muscles flicker. Now take that imagining from this moment to five minutes from now, one hour, a year, five years, 19 years later. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what it's like to be paralyzed. Overcoming my challenges didn't happen overnight. It took time to arrive at a place of acceptance of my reality. It took time to transform my wounds into wisdom. And while my heart grieved for everything that I had lost, somehow my spirit rejoiced for everything I had left, for I had adaptive technology that helped me move forward with my life. I learned to kayak again, to whitewater raft, hand cycle, hang glide, paraglide, and to ski again. And in fact, skiing is my favorite thing to do to this day. It's the greatest pleasure Seriously, to ride a chairlift to the top of the mountain, look out at that view again, say a prayer to the wind, and to dance on snow. Yet, despite all the adaptive technology out there, nothing had been invented that enabled me to learn how to walk again. Walking in e-legs is truly euphoric. I get a natural high. Yeah, I've gone up in altitude. <laughs> but seriously, the psychological benefits far outweigh anything. I feel as though I've got exoskeleton calf muscles, hamstrings, quads, Achilles tendons. It's an outer shell that wraps around me so that I can strike my heels forward, heel to toe, heel to toe, one step after another. 
I move effortlessly through space. While my spinal cord injury took away my ability to walk, it didn't take away my ability to dream. And with bionic technology, my dreams are becoming my reality one step at a time. And what do I dream for? Ladies and gentlemen, I dream for the simple pleasures. I dream for reaching for that top item on the grocery shelf in the store. I dream for running on the beach again in Australia. No longer does that beach have to be my nemesis. I dream for hiking the Rocky Mountains. And I dream for slow dancing with someone that I love, chest to chest, heart to heart, like our vibrant and alive Lacey. What a role model. With bionic technology, it has the potential to truly turn a life around. My mother has yearned for me to walk, for her baby girl to take her steps for 19 years. It's her dream as much as it is mine. So, Mama, I walk for you. I walk for me. I walk for every person in a wheelchair that dreams of taking their first steps again. I walk for the mothers, the fathers, the sisters, the brothers, and the best friends that share that dream too. Our future is now, and with bionic technology, anything is possible. So, as you can hear, Amanda, she inspires, but she sure does put pressure on me. <laughs> We're a team. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I just want to tell you a little bit where we are with uh, Elex. Um, we are, at the moment, uh, introducing this to 10 clinics uh, around the, the country uh, in a professional version. So, it's, uh, it's spotted. There's always somebody behind it. Uh, that will be most likely a, a physical therapist. And uh, later on, in 2013, our intention is to introduce what we call the personal version. And uh, that is when Amanda will actually be able to take one with her home yes. and use just like a prosthetic leg that she puts on just like Lacey in the morning and wears during the day. So that's where we are. And in terms of uh, the future, there is the future is bright for, for bionic technologies. There is a lot of technologies coming about. Motors are getting smaller. All these things are getting lighter and easier to use. But it's resulting in several types of products. Exoskeleton is just the latest invention. Cochlear implants have been around for a while. Uh, artificial limbs, obviously, as you have seen. And um, and the uh, vision is being restored with bionic eyes. So it's a truly amazing, amazing time, and it's fun to see that actually the future, future is here. But it doesn't happen without collaboration. It doesn't happen without collaboration with uh, researchers, the universities, with talents that come out of the universities, just like Dr. Tim Swift here that is behind. He is one of the brainchilds of Elex from UC Berkeley, and uh, insurance companies that will uh, work with us on driving these prices down and making it affordable to as many as possible. But it's first and foremost the users themselves, like Amanda, that will, uh, will push this technology forward. And therefore, we are so fortunate to have somebody that actually takes the time every month for a week to fly out to Berkeley and work with us on this, and that's, that's Amanda. Unbelievable. But there is something else happening in Colorado. And that is Craig Hospital, which is just around the corner here. 
They are one of the 10 hospitals that actually is participating in this. They are leading in this field, very focused on spinal cord injuries, and we are very, very proud to be associated with Craig Hospital here. And um, I think it is next month that we will be spending a whole week with them trialing out DLEX. So it's really exciting times, and uh, Colorado is really a big part of it. So uh, I just want to say that we are um, very excited about showing this. I th hope you can share with us the excitement of that bionic technology can not only be a platform to expand people's possibilities, but also realize, like in the case of Amanda, her dreams. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.